What's up everyone, my name is Blue and we are back with some more pro revenge stories. These people are the absolute cream of the crop when it comes to serving cold dishes. If you haven't yet, please consider subscribing to the channel. And with that, let's get into it. I catfished a former boss to get paid. I used to work for a married couple, Billy, a 52-year-old male, and Gigi, a 44-year-old female, who owned a business services slash public relations agency. It lasted more or less for a year. They seemed nice and humble, but in reality, they were shady and untruthful. The company began to falter because of poor management and zero intention to prioritize. Billy was your baby-faced next-door neighbor type. He looked about 10 years younger and had a kind smile. He was soft-spoken and had an artistic and creative flair to him. Gigi looked matronly with a Mother Earth incarnate attitude towards her children. She prided herself on being ruthless when it came to giving her family only the best. She could be really nice when she wanted to, but I found out early on that she was 100% apt at gossip and being two-faced. The company's constant changes were a red flag. They went from business services and a PR agency to IT provider to business incubator to indie beer partners. What I'm trying to say is that they tried to dip their donut on everyone's coffee, figuratively. Some of us had no real way to escape. The lady working next to me was already 67 years old and scared that no one would hire her. I wasn't in a great place either. We were eight employees in total. They wouldn't lay anyone off because they believed that the employee should quit. They paid us only a portion of our salaries, incomplete weekly payments. Employees would run for the hills once they found a better job. Some of us were stuck. It was horrible. Then, they would pay the normal rate for a month and then do it again. They never cut down on their luxury expenses, so the wife would post her shopping sprees or arrive in a new car like it was nothing. Zero empathy. Very insensitive. The husband was obsessed with making it big time. So much that he sometimes failed to see an opportunity right in front of him. He said he was Coca-Cola's brand manager. I swear, I looked it up and could never find any reference. Gigi had a display full of small local magazines, mostly about design and architecture. They were very proud to be a team member, but in reality, they just helped them print two issues. They wanted big business only, but in the meantime, looked down upon tangible potential clients. Like the young Latino couple who showed up trying to learn more about their services. They seemed lost because they wanted someone to help them set up a coffee business and had no idea how it was done. I talked to them and helped them into the waiting room. They even showed up with their baby in a stroller. That means they must have driven by and decided to come in. An impulsive client should be retained. The guy said his grandpa had a farm and he wanted to create an import-exports company. Once Billy showed up, he listened for a bit, then kind of gave them a kind of an abrupt dismissal. That was a jerk move because that couple opened their own business with someone else and even have a Facebook page. It could have been Billy. Billy lined his office walls with posters of Steve Jobs and Elon Musk. His wife, the chief enabling officer, put up signs on each room. 
The main employee area was the machine room. Billy's office was the chamber. The conference room was a meeting of the minds. Every time an employee disagreed with Billy during a brainstorming session, Gigi would call them aside and tell them that Billy is your boss. You need to know that he is brilliant and a genius. I want him to have that taste of success. I experienced that firsthand. I also hated brainstorming because that was never on my job description. They just wanted to pick everyone's brains. In the meantime, we had to see the Pandora jewelry, the expensive makeovers for their daughters, and the Weekend at the Spa updates on Facebook. Gigi's captions were usually about rewarding herself after a hard week or because she deserved it. Oh, and I'd like to mention that they bought into the social guru phrases about emotional direction. So, if an employee ever got angry, Gigi would tell you, Remember, the one who gets angry is the one who ends up losing. For anyone who's been in this situation, you may understand how painful it can be. You cannot leave the job because you have no other job waiting for you. And pathetic as it may sound to some, some income is better than no income at all. This is an involuntary compromise and it's abusive. Why were we expected to pay for their luxuries via incomplete wages? My best friend's ex is into coding and programming, and he agreed to help. If it didn't work out, at least we would have something to laugh about. We created a kick-ass fake website with a matching LinkedIn and the whole nine yards. To make a long story short, this was supposed to be an investment company, and my friend would be very casual. Nothing too eager. He started by liking my employer's Facebook page, then comment. Before we knew, my boss took the bait and was engaging. They exchanged emails and he was eager to share all his projects and ambitious junk. On the other side, the investor sent him a list of requirements, like proof of concept, employer payroll, EIN number, etc. The investor agreed to work them if they could prove they were legit and up to date. No bank account of confidential info was asked. Within three weeks, I was paid the equivalent to the two months and a half I was owed. The investor did an about face and never contacted him again. I left the job as soon as I could. My friend who remained until she got paid told me our boss seemed off and a bit down after he announced, big things are coming, but it all seemed to deflate. I never disclosed what was really going on. Edit. My boss wasn't scammed into paying money to the fake website. He was catfished into getting up to date with employee salaries that he owed. Edit. I expanded the story. Edit. For anyone who doesn't understand the story, no money was paid, asked from, or wired from my boss to the investor. We baited his greedy character and told him that if he could prove everything was in order, the investment would happen. This included the payroll. No confidential info was asked nor offered, seen, or reviewed. He paid everyone what he owed them. The payment was made to each worker as normally. No one stole any money via any website. He just made the diligence. EIN numbers and what we asked are not confidential. Man, I'm glad they added in that little edit at the end because yeah, the way that story was written, it seemed like, it seemed like they pretty much pulled an illegal move just to get the money back. But I'm glad that it was I, maybe a legal gray area but it forced that jerk boss to 
even up with all of his employees, I couldn't believe that he would like cut their salaries in order for his wife to like go on really nice spa days and then put it on Facebook like that. Like, come on. And I guess, yeah, you couldn't really like talk to the boss about it because it's not going to stop anything. I'm glad it seemingly all worked out in the end. And that's all the time we have for this pro-revenge story. If you liked it, make sure to click that like button. And if you have anything to say about it, make sure to leave a comment for us. And make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on any more stories. Thanks for listening, everyone. Catch you later.